Welcome to the Talking Tech and Talent podcast, where leaders in Australia in technology, transformation and projects drop by and share their insights. I'm your host, Tim Hutchinson, and I'm delighted today to be here with Nico Bovian de Montreux. Nico is owner of Bluestone Communications, specializing in enhancing data control and uplifting program performance. Nico and I are going to explore some of the challenges facing leaders in driving the delivery of their programs. We're going to look at the, uh, his passion for removing complexity from programs. And then finally, from a talent perspective, we're going to uh, hear Nico's take on the reality of life as an independent consultant, and he'll share some tips. We'll get into that right after this. Welcome to the Ember Talking Tech and Talent podcast where Australian business leaders and experts discuss the technology and talent challenges facing organisations today and the opportunities available to innovative businesses in the future. Let's get the conversation started. Nico, welcome. Absolute pleasure to have you here today. Thanks for having me, Tim. We'll have the uh, now traditional welcome of... (laughs) That's in lieu of a large crowd who would typically be here. but I've been expecting that, so loving it. Fantastic. Um, now, hopefully we've got a pretty good conversation ahead of us. We've been doing a bit of prep this week. Yes. And um, got a couple of things we're going to cover. We're going to look at challenges facing leaders in driving the delivery of their programs and objectives. Um, your own passion for removing complexity yep. and simplifying things. Um, and then I'm also keen to explore the reality of life as an independent consultant. Now, before all of that, uh, we want to understand who the who the uh, man is behind Nico, behind the fantastic name Nico Bovian de Montreux. Oh, you did really well. <laughs> Thank you very much. Merci, <laughs> merci. Um, and my notes here. So let's we've got to go straight into it. An extreme sports fanatic. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Tell tell me all. Oh well, um, probably start from um, where I come from. Hmm. Um, I mentioned that to you earlier, I think, but um, uh, it's also nicknamed the French Hawaii. Okay. And it's Reunion Island, which is a French department in the Indian Ocean next to Madagascar. Oh, I love it. Yeah. And another name to describe the island is Intense. And Intense because of all the sports, uh, crazy sports for some. Yeah, okay, um, okay. That you can do over there. And from my point of view, I like to have fun. And one of the ways I have fun is, um, yeah, trying new things, new sports, mm-hmm. and very often, um, maybe scary ones or, or extreme ones. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's what I've done, and that's what I keep doing. So age is a number. <laughs> Ab- absolu- absolutely, I'm with you on that, I'm with you on that. It's an increasing number, but it's a number, yeah. It, it is, it is. Um, you, you rode pro motocross for Yamaha in Europe? Uh, in Reunion, so yes, part of, part of France, yes. Part of Reunion? Yep, okay. when I was young. Um, and what about now, what are you doing? Arriving in Australia, um, I got into running. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, probably the hard way, but um, into running and, and found an absolute passion for trail running. And you're talking the sort of the, the, the 100K, six foot tracks, the, the 50Ks, uh, the. Ultra, yes. Yeah, ultra. Okay. So okay. I thought never really run long di- distance before. I may as well go into the ultra straight away. Oh, well, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so I started with 50, uh, I did a couple of hundreds. Yep. Um, uh, for charity, so that's okay. the, um, you may have heard of it, the Oxfam Trail Walker. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so I did two of these. Um, fantastic, fantastic experience personally, and that was for my 40th birthday. So I thought, okay, I don't want to be party. I don't want anything else. I want to do something meaningful and maybe prove it to myself. Brilliant. And yeah. I signed up with some incredible friends and, and people um, into um, into the hundred k's. And and one well. Funny story that I found is, is yeah, yeah, funny yeah, yeah. is they've all done like maybe six, seven times um, okay. and, and great athletes. And one of them who I've never run with before, uh, we are about the 30K mark. Mm-hmm. And he says, oh, Nico, how many of these have you done? I said, well, it's my first one. Okay, great. What's the longest you've run? <laughs> that was it. That was it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, so I run a few. And the next one is a six foot track, which is a mm. 50, 50 odd case. Uh, in, um, in my, and that's why I said most of the runs I do are really for charity or to support, or at least my way to try and give back yeah. to, um, to, um, to Australia. So. Oh, I love it. I love it. Good. Well, here's, you, you did mention a story where I think you were, it was suggested you go for a jog at lunchtime. Yes. I think you need to share that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
And then, um, well, he'll, he'll know himself, so really good friend of mine. Um, we didn't know each other much um, when I arrived. So that's me arriving in Australia four days uh, into, a, into a job. And that mm -hmm. was when I, I, I joined um, NBN as a, as a consultant to, 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 to add some value and, and, and yep. make some, some changes and, and support them in, in delivering the objectives. Um, four days in, one of my managers um, suggests that, um, okay, you seem quite fit. So yep. Okay, thanks. Um, do you fancy going for a jog? Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well, that's a good way to get to know each other and, yeah, yeah. and, and let's do this. Um, little did I know that um, it's the kind of guy who um, run the Marathon des Sables. So that's your ah, yeah, um, yeah. Sahara un unassisted um, run. <laughs> so I didn't know really any of this. Uh, and he said, Nico, let's go for a jog. And I was like, okay, lunchtime, jog, well, just maybe like five. Maybe, maybe around Domain or... Yeah, yeah, so well, yeah, yeah. I didn't know what yep. Sydney landscape was, just arrived. Yep. And I think we went for about maybe 20 Ks, and that's my memory of it. <laughs> and I remember saying, okay, so I can't, I can't not keep going. No, no. This guy's my boss. Mm. I'm just trying to make a good impression yeah, arriving yeah. in the country and the company. Um, second one, uh, I can't see him turning. <laughs> <laughs> so we keep going yep. and never thought Sydney was so hilly. It's hilly. So starting yeah. from North Sydney and going towards Starangazoo and all these kind of things. And I was like, yeah, I am not enjoying this. <laughs> but, but, but that attitude was there, stayed focused. Yeah, oh, I never give up. And that's, that's, why, that's why I applied to, to my life and, and with the work I do Fantastic. as well. Fantastic. When you told me that story, I made a note to myself here saying it's, it's a little like, um, you know, Keith Richards? Yes. A little like Keith Richards suggesting you go for a quiet drink, <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then it, and it leads to where you'd expect. So, um, in terms of now, now that we sort of shift into the the Nico in the world of work, ju just give the, the the viewers and listeners a sense of your experience to date, yep. because you've actually covered the worlds. I think of you know data, project management, PMO, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But just give me a sense of where where you've built your knowledge essentially. Okay, so I left home. Back reunion, yep. paradise. It's like, wh why did you leave? No, that's that, that's because I wanted to grow and see the world and learn things. I was fortunate enough to um, to to be able to do my studies in Paris. So thank you, the parents, for that. Okay. Thank you very much for supporting me and believing in me. Uh, and I, that's where I did a master in um, um, telecommunication, IT, okay, and and management. Um, uh, from that point, I so that was five years. From that point, I thought, okay. I'm not from Paris, my friends. I don't want to go back home. Um, so I'm going to find a business or organization where I'm going to learn a lot, but I'm going to travel. Okay. Uh, and I went into the telecom industry at this point. And through that, I started as okay, quite, quite junior, but always pushing the boundaries and saying, okay, um, I get their managers and all these things, but I can do this. And so I lived with my suitcase, which was very exciting mm -hmm. for, I think, a good, a good 10 years. Wow. Uh, okay. And that is always going into very innovative projects mm -hmm. or programs. Okay. Um, uh, so no, in the unknown, all the time the unknown. So different countries, I yeah, did yeah. about probably 12, 13 countries. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I did a lot of countries in Europe. Mm -hmm. I did China, so Shanghai. Uh, right. I did Hong Kong, I did Taiwan, I did um, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, um, uh, and that's probably, yes, all the rest are, are in Europe. And in what capacity, though? You're, you're essentially evolving into project-related Yeah, so program, expert, program delivery, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, sales as well, so okay. technology sales with, for, for some of our um, customers, and that is setting up new platforms, mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and yes, trying new technology and trying to make it work. So going somewhere, building a platform, and, and uh, building the processes, building um, the capabilities, and demonstrating to the customer that, okay, this is going to work. So, 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 so you've essentially gained that experience in an in a exceptionally wide range of situations, yes. both countries, different businesses. You've presumably seen what good, bad, and or from excellent to yeah. whatever the other extreme is. Yes. I want to hear what you've learned in terms of uh, the, the challenges that leaders have in understanding um, and driving the delivery of their programs. Yep. I want to look at that complexity piece, which seems to be a common theme that you want to, you know, cut through. Yes. And that third piece around uh, 
there are again repeating themes of pain points yes. that you presumably see and probably think, oh, not, not again. <laughs> let's start. So let's start with that piece, sort of the, you know, the, the classic challenges that leaders face in driving program delivery. Um, I think maybe one of the obvious one would be time mm -hmm. and the amount of information they get presented okay. to, uh, to, to try and make an informed decision within the time that they've got to, to influence the delivery and deliver the objectives. Okay. So I think time is of the essence. So time is money, time. I'm time sorry to interrupt here, but, but at the point you arrive, yes. if you're talking about time, you're, it presumably presents a problem or lack of time. Yep. Do you think that is typically goes back to the very origination of the program? Um, could you elaborate on that? In, in the sense that are people, are people naive or under too much pressure to really carve out, we need this period of time and we need this resource? So, so that's one of the challenge. The, the other one is going to be perception. Yeah, okay. So you are presented with a lot of information mm. from various teams, your teams and, and, and your different stakeholders. And from that, you're trying to one navigate through what you think you should mm -hmm. take from it. Yep. Um, um, or um, you've got a, a, a view of how your team and your program is going yes. based on what they're yes. sharing with you. Yes. Okay. okay. So that is a perception for me that is quite risky when we try to deliver very critical, aggressive mm. programs or, or objectives. Uh, and why is, is it scary or, or, or maybe dangerous? It's because you, well, you may not be sleeping very well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because um, if there's nothing that is giving you a guarantee of, of what you're thinking is, is correct, or this okay. perception. Okay. Okay. So, so as and when you join a program, yep. w what's your approach in essence? So very simple. Yeah. Back, back to simplicity. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so first it would be to, to listen and understand. Mm -hmm. So what's the bigger picture? What's, I, I get you may want something. So let, let's say you're, you're, you're the leader I'm going to be talking to, right? Yes, you're, you're, yes, yeah. you're the organization and you're going to say, oh, we, we want this. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to say, I understand and I hear that. Yeah, yeah. Can you please first share with me what your objectives are? What are you trying to achieve? This is sometimes like I've heard this described as the notion of, the slowing down to speed up. Correct. So it's kind of taking a breath and going, okay, let's let's yeah. t t take the state of the nation, yeah. And often the speed up is, oh, we need more resources. Mm -hmm. Oh, we need to change the process. Yeah, and yeah. I'm saying, let's slow down first, yep. right? And that's, that's back to the slow down or speed up is, okay, these approaches in my books and my experience cost a lot of money and are very disruptive to organization, but also the teams and, and resources, individuals that's actually doing the work. Right, and that's where we talk about engagement, all these kind of things, and and change is 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 challenging. Hmm. And th the approach I, I take is okay. Before we rock the boat, and it may be needed, but let's let's make an informed decision. So back to the facts. Yep, yep. Um, let's review and assess how you're performing today, hmm. and understand that is this the best that you can do. If that's the case, then let's look at, at rocking that boat because we need to do something differently to succeed. Okay. Um, and if it's not, what can we do and empowering the decision makers mm. to make these changes? So, so I want to ask you something, Nico, which you must have come across, which is people say, you know, 80% of all programs fail, 70% all fail, 90% all fail. They, they can't all be correct. And I'm somewhat skeptical that... Um, the idea of success or failure is binary in that program world. What, what's your take on that when you see those sort of statistics? So statistics are always interesting um, and we can read in them what we want to read, mm -hmm. I think, right? So for me, what, um, what was the measure of success? Yeah, okay. What's, what's the benchmark? I would say I would look at that first and say, okay, so what are we measuring this project program success mm -hmm. against? Yeah. And okay. um, it may be a failure... Um, based on some parameters, but a success in others. Um, can we put everything in the same basket? I don't, I don't really agree with that. Um, and that's where I go back to one of my key tools or uh, approach or um, beliefs, mm -hmm. uh, which is precision. Yeah, okay. So let's be clear and precise. So yes, this is a stat. What, what are we measuring? And, and what's, what's the message behind that stat as well? So what do we want to communicate? Is this something to... Um, to to drive change, yeah. 
Is it something to just communicate performance? Mm. What kind of performance? What's what's the what's the objective of, of of these numbers? Because we all work with numbers every day, whether we want to or not. Um, I decide to. <laughs> That's yep. where yeah, yeah, I use yep. I use data to um to to articulate and and empower um, leaders and organization to to deliver what they are aiming to or to um, to to achieve. Um, but um, yeah, what's what's the stat? I can just imagine you coming in as a consultant would be uh, just a hugely positive influence in terms of, uh, I'd probably describe you as the voice of reason and a bit of a, what are the other analogies, oil on water, that sort of, that calming influence who maybe kind of corrals people and says, let's just take a breath here. Let's all make certain we are all on the same page. And you've, you've mentioned something there that I take as, starting off by setting the context or resetting the context of what people are doing. And again, on our side, supplying talent to programs and projects, there's often this kind of un underlying panic. We've got to have resources weak. Yep. But the resource is, 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 I wouldn't say set up to fail, but perhaps is not set up to succeed because they don't necessarily, they're not given the context of, not given the why very clearly. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's spot on. And, and, I would say the the calming aspect or the welcome aspect is mm. is something I've I've um, I've experienced often, mm. but I've also experienced as the feedback. Sorry, or yeah, as, as yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So yeah, we 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 are welcoming the um, the 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 external eyes and mm. and the the, uh, the opportunity to do something differently. Share with us what what you think we can do, and yeah, that's yeah. that's been that's been fantastic. I've also had um, the other side, which is. Um, you've had the buying from the leadership and the exec to uh, to to have um, a, a different approach in, mm -hmm. um, but you haven't got the buying from the operations. Yes. Yeah. And therefore, it's okay. So, who's the new guy, or what is he going to bring in, or all these kind of things? Um, but I've managed to turn this around, mm. and I think it's down to also listening to people mm. and bring them on the journey with you, as opposed to just going somewhere and. Um, pretending or claiming that you know everything. Mm. So I have found myself as um, uh, not a mediator, but um, a gateway yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. being able to understand uh, and articulate communication and requirement at an operational level, as well as an executive level. And it's back to telling the story, mm. okay? And, te Absolutely. and telling the story and the story that resonates to the right audience. Mm. So I worked and, and I, I've adapted to work with very uh, wide range of stakeholders in organization, um, but I will always treat everyone with the same level of respect, whether you are the, the, the person that's going to be tightening the bolt or yeah, yeah. the one who's, who's um, leading the, the, the full organization. Because I think everyone has a view and contribution in the way things need to be, need to be done. And I take all these alongside with the data, which I use to, um, to, to make an informed decision. Yep. Um, and provide the solution that I, I bring to um, to these businesses. Yeah, okay, understood. Now, I want to look at this world of, th th this new podcast series is going to be called Talking Tech and Talent. And that talent piece is important in the current climate because there's a, I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a lack of talent out there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's people talking about things like the Great Resignation. Yeah. Um, there's people talking about Australia needing a million more tech, broadly tech talented people in the next decade. Th these are hot topics. Just talk to me about what, what th that journey of being an independent consultant or however you might be labeled in a different role. Yep. Um, what that feels like for somebody contemplating leaving the world of employment and embarking on a similar journey. Coming from okay, permanent employment to consulting, I think is only a shift in mindset. Okay. Uh, and why I'm saying that is, what we used to know, and, and I would say probably before my time or earlier in my time, yeah, yeah, yeah. is uh, the, the security of a job, mm. right? Um, can we say this today? I, oh. I, and, and that's where, okay, back, let's say back in the days, not so long ago, mm. um, that was the, the, the biggest difference between being permanent because you potentially had a job for life, mm. right? Uh, and being a consultant, which was a bit more daring, I guess, or risky. Yeah, and that it has its rewards, mm. okay, and and uh, 
let's not let's not ignore this. But it's also very risky because you're on your own, and you need to make it happen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Um, that's something that I embraced and and um, I enjoyed mm -hmm. um, for a number of reasons. Um, one in line and and as I've shared with you at the beginning, I like trying new things, mm. um, and the unknown, while it is scary, does is it's not a deterrent. In, in in my case, mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, I will I will try. Uh, it always starts, in my view, with believing in yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you will you will achieve. Uh, I'm, I'm confident you will achieve whatever you want to achieve, mm -hmm. as long as you believe in your ability mm -hmm. um, and the, the the fact that you're always going to learn and grow, right? Um, so with this mindset, going into um, the independent world, yep. I would say. Um, is is a no brainer. Is is there a is there a downside? Um, there is in the fact that um, whether it's a downside or not, there's um, there's risks, right? Mm -hmm. there's, there's always a lot of risk, and tomorrow you may not have a contract, or you may mm -hmm. not have an opportunity to work on, uh, and all this relies on on the network that you have to build. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, which and and the people that you meet because obviously you need people are going to share with you what they want to achieve um, as they know you, um, <coughs> not Absolutely. by seeing your CV, for example. Absolutely. Right? And and that's that's where it can be a bit daunting. Our downside is okay. So how do I get to know more people? How do I get to know to share or understand what they're trying to achieve and the value I could add to so what they. So do? I'm going to ask you exactly that question. Yeah. How do you get to know more people? What What is your approach to networking? Because you're absolutely right. We we still come across, let's call them again, independent consultants who think it's about a CV and an opportunity. Yep. But in fact, they're already behind the curve because someone else is networking, being referred into it. Yeah, exactly. Most so of it happens under, you know, it's a bit like an iceberg. Most of it happens under the under the water. Yeah, we only see the tip, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, from so what is your approach? Yeah. Um, my approach is leveraging on the people that you've worked with and I've seen firsthand what you bring and what you do. Yep, okay. okay. And yep. and make sure that one you you um you don't just contact people when you need them. Okay. Yep. So that's that's yep. critical and very important. Mm, absolutely. I know we're all very busy. We're always busy yeah, and, yeah. and they're very difficult to find time, but it's also um, important to to keep in touch with, with who you've worked with. Um, who's valued your services? Uh, I would say um, that's that's one part. The other one, and that, sorry, that plays into this notion of reciprocity as well, where you know, give before you're trying to take. That that is correct. And share that's, your that's knowledge, sharing. share your advice freely. Yeah. Yes, and and, and share and share your views yeah, and yeah. share your vision. Not everyone has to, uh, to to agree or accept, but at least you're sharing, and that's why I mean, one of the the way I've approached a lot of the programs I worked on in Australia was to give back. Yeah. And and give back not just on the on the work aspect because I'm sharing with my team I'm I'm coaching I'm, I've shared with my clients, um, but also giving back to Australia. So I feel yeah. every day I pinch myself. I'm so grateful that we've been able to to move here and live here as a family. It's 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 fantastic. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Um, and that's where I said that, but that's in my runnings. It's always about charities. Yep. Um, um, uh, when it came to to work. Um, NBN was a prime example, and that for me was a way to be able to to contribute to um, building this network mm. for um, all Australians, yep. without exceptions. So and do you, in terms of that networking piece, um, I think I know the answer you might give, but we work with people who are uh, almost embarrassed by the notion of networking because they feel they are, I guess, th th I mean, they're nice people. They normally feel they're sort of you. Know, on the take or asking for something. Yeah. My, my genuine view is that they're actually offering something. Yeah. You know, they're offering something of value. Um, and it's such a natural process. But pe people are certainly, you see people come out of permanent roles yep. who have perhaps, dare I say, had the first career setback, perhaps ever since school, perhaps. And at 40, 45, 50 years old, might suffer redundancy. Typically, very, very nervous to to reach out. It's scary, right? It's um, it's a change. Mm. Change is very scary. Um, where do you start? Mm. It's who do I speak to? All, all these kind of questions are going to be 
coming into into your mind yeah. and and um, is there a recipe on on building a network i don't know i'm trying <laughs> Uh, the, the there's maybe a bit of a basic uh, stereotype, but you're French. <laughs> so if there is a recipe, I would hope you, I'd hope you know the ingredients and know how to cook it. So yes, and I, 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 I think I'm. Is that too stereotypical? Uh, no, it's not. It's <laughs> not. I've got, I've got some really, really good ingredients and yep. uh, in my recipe for success. Yeah. Okay. Um, recipe for networking is be yourself. Yep. And uh, as you say, I'm not trying to sell anyone anything. Uh, I'm sharing with them what I do. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and 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 essentially trying to understand what what they need. How do you, uh, apart from being yourself, which I think I imagine is very compelling, mm -hmm. um, how do you help potential clients verify you? And by that I mean, you know, you you, you can tell them, but how do you show them, or how do you get third party verification? Do you ha do you have particular advocates who you who, who have your back? Um, permanently yes from from the work i've done in previous organizations yep. so reference and, yep. and think that's so ab absolutely um uh, but i'm probably saying i'm probably going a step further than just a just a reference as in let's tick the reference box yeah are there people i guess we find it's increasingly where clients really appreciate genuine verification of somebody's mm -hmm. ability not just what they've done but also what the outcome was yeah how successful what they've done was um because people like to buy what other people have bought and yeah. enjoyed. So it's a bit of a rambling non-question, but again, you, 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 you approach it from that angle, do you? I, I try, and I'm okay. still trying to find out how to do this. Yeah, okay. Um, because I don't take the work I've delivered and developed for a particular client with me. Sure, yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. So it's, this is... They'll, um, be, they'll be relieved to know that probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, and, and that's because the solutions I build are tailored to these clients and, and their requirements. Hmm. Um, how do I share that? Um, that's something I'm still exploring at this point because I'm making a shift from selling my services as an individual hmm. to selling the solutions that I bring. Yeah, right. Okay. So I'm okay. still on the, um, uh, I would say, exploring path on, on this one and, and keen to have some, some feedback from, from your viewers and, and mm. anybody as to, okay, how I could approach this. Um, but I'm definitely moving from selling Nico as, a, as an employee or person or consultant yeah, yeah, yeah. to the solution piece, which is basically something that I would do from an assessment of this organization mm. and, and um, company objectives and capabilities and coming back to them with what I believe they need. Yeah, okay. So we've covered all those areas. I mean, I, I love your approach to it because you are, you genuinely come across as, as I said, you know, modest, a calming influence, the voice of reason. You just understand as a consultant that organizations, I think, would probably breathe a collective sigh of relief once they understand who they've, <laughs> who's entered the building. Um, what advice can you you know, people may reach out to you after this. Mm -hmm. um, and presumably, if they want to, they just contact you through LinkedIn or... Yes, yeah. I'm, I'm quite active on LinkedIn, and, and that's one of the, um, I would say, platform I'm, I'm using to, to get to know more people, to yeah, build yeah, my network and, and share ideas. So, so if you are listening or watching, feel free to reach out to Nico, whether it's opportunities, um, you know, to work, to work with him, to, 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 to just share your pain points and work out a solution together or whether it's just to share advice or network. Um, for those who, those who perhaps aren't ready to reach out, you'll need to reach out to them now. What would be your little sort of, you know, uh, nugget, nuggets of wisdom for the listeners and the viewers? <laughs> yep. So the first one would be listen. Yep, okay. Okay, understand what is being shared with you as opposed to going somewhere thinking you know what, what you, you're going to do and need to do. Mm -hmm. So listen to your client. Uh, it may sound obvious and cliche, but that's 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 what I do. Mm -hmm. um, the, the second one is um, one of the key tool in my toolbox is uh, be precise. Yep, uh, and that's where I use data a lot. That's the engineering, you isn't it? That's that's yeah. engineering, yep. but that's where the fact base and the um, uh, I would say the story how the story gets built. Mm -hmm. is okay. The, the foundation for me is is the credibility is from the data. Yeah. So precision, 
credibility is is absolutely key, and that's that's how I build it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the the last one, there, there are many more, but the last one I would like to share is keep it fun. Absolutely, right? is we spend all this time in front of screens and all these things and running from A to B or, mm -hmm. or trying to deliver things. If it's not fun, we're wasting our time. So while you stick to your values, keep it fun. Absolutely. Have we had some fun today? I've had amazing time, Tim, so yeah. Because I think, I mean, it, this is a new experience. I've, okay, I've done a few of these now, but it's always a new experience, I think. You know, getting the headphones on, going into the tunnel and talking um, and un understanding who we are. Braving the element. Everything, right? Seems Absolutely, weird. you've come here through <laughs> through a, through a tempestuous storm to um, to reach out to people, and hopefully, yeah. I think people will genuinely appreciate hearing your insights. Great. Hey, look, it's been an absolute pleasure. Tim, thank you. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I've no doubt we'll carry on talking about um, mountain biking, motocross, all sorts of things. So, I think it remains to wish you well with your next your next venture, your next run. Thank you very much. Uh, wish you well with the networking. And um, long may the fun continue. And please share, right? That's, it's all about sharing and we Absolutely. all learn together and, and support each other by sharing our um, our wins, but our challenges as well. So we can Absolutely. help each other. So Absolutely. Please. Thank you ever so much. Thank you, Tim. Cheers. Thanks for joining. This podcast was brought to you by Ember. Creating talent solutions in technology, transformation, data and analytics, and project services across Australia. If you enjoyed the conversation, don't forget to leave a comment, subscribe and share. If you'd like to get in touch with the Ember team, simply send an email, visit the website or connect on LinkedIn. Contact details can be found in the description. See you next time.